is also kind of kicks into that competitive edge similar to real estate a little bit mm -hmm. whereas like look i want this i'm gonna beat everybody else this is the time i need and if i get to the meet i'm gonna make that happen that's all i'm in i'm zoning in this for the next you know two minutes nothing else than this. All right, welcome to Let's Talk Real with Mel. We are here with Austin Garner, realtor and business owner extraordinaire, team lead with Loft Realty, uh, business, small business coach, realtor, musician. <laughs> what else do you do, man? I like to stay busy. Uh, musician used to be a ballet dancer. I'm a firefighter and EMT as well, so I, forgot. I stay busy. Yeah, I, I do everything, man. I, I see something like, oh, shiny object, I need to do right. this. All right. Yeah, life's be short not to do that. Like, you just got to go around and do it all. All right, so what, What? I mean, how'd you, how'd you start? I mean, what What made you, um, where were you from? Basically, I know Delaware, but what? I'm from Delaware. Um, I'm from a little city called Milford, and by city, I mean, there's like 10,000 of us. Okay. In like five, six miles, so it's really not that big at all. It's super small. Um, but come from Delaware, small state, chicken state. Um, everybody knows everybody, or at least they know your cousin. So, you know, good at that. Right. Good at that. Um, I got into real estate because at the time I was working full time as a firefighter in EMT. And then I was also running my parents business. So I had no free time and was making some money, but not really good money. And so being exhausted, feeling like I was still broke at the end of the day, I hated it. And so my buddy, Zach was getting into real estate. I was like, interesting, let's talk. And so our personalities were very similar. So I said, hey, if you're gonna succeed in this, I will too. But if you fail, I'm gonna I'll fail. Do. So I'm gonna give you six months real quick. Let me see how you do. And then we started it together. Yeah, I was like, yo, I'm cool for this. I love this. And so we started building up law from there where it was just me and him and to law reality now, where we have 15 plus producing agents. We have about 10 admin and we're looking to do hopefully 302 transactions this year. Wow, three out no. two, just like the zip code. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, they did a little cheesy, but he said, you know what? Like it makes sense, like though. It's a good number to shoot for. So you got a team of uh, 25. Yep. Agents and staff. Uh, we're looking, you know, you're doing multiple hundreds of transactions. Mm -hmm. How'd you, what, what year does, was did this come together? So Zach was getting into real estate. Yep. He said, well, I'll get into real estate. When was that? How long ago was that? 2017, 2018. Okay, so um, pretty, pretty recently. Yeah, five, five years ago. Five, five six years ago. ago. So... You guys start out agents, mm -hmm. and I assume you didn't just at that time. It wasn't like we're going to do law of realty. There was you guys went and worked for a traditional company, right? A, a broker. We started a KW. And then how did you? How, what was the tra what was that transition like? Like what made you decide that you want to more punishment? Yeah, right. Yeah, you want to do more stuff. Well, we didn't want that initially. Actually, um, we initially started a KW, and then obviously as a team, you're trying to find the perfect brokerage to house you where the splits make sense and the admin and support. And so we went from them to Linda Vista, which is a local boutique brokerage, um, to Myos Realty, which is another boutique brokerage, and we wanted to create a satellite office. And so we turned our application to the state again and again and again, and they kept denying us. Um, uh, it took about eight or nine tries for them to finally accept our application, and we kind of came to the conclusion that the reason they were denying us is we were young. Right, we were doing stuff different. We were on social media, Facebook, Instagram, back before everybody was on Facebook and Instagram. So they would yeah, deny TikTok. us. And TikTok yeah. too. Yeah, you can't forget that. Yeah. Uh, and we got denied for you know for, for dumb things. You don't have signage up. Well, we're not allowed to. Oh, well, put signage up. We put it up, and then they deny it for that. Or you know they lost all paperwork once, right? So they denied us the next month. And eventually, we spoke to our broker, and he said, "Hey, I'll be a broker for your brokerage." And so we turned that in finally. And they actually almost rejected it. And we was like, no, we're turning in a brokerage application. We're going to be a broker. And so from that day forward, we became Loft Realty, which is, again, nothing we wanted to do. We just wanted to be a team because there's a little bit more that comes when you are your brokerage um, versus being just a, a, you know, a team of agents. But it's been an absolutely amazing journey, and I wouldn't trade it at all. I can say when opportunity comes knocking, we've just always been there to open the door at the end of the day. I know that's cliche, but it's true. Like, if there's something there, we're just going to take it right so that's pretty cool so 
almost like you 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 were forced. Your hand was forced. Yeah. And it, what was the? I mean, you said they didn't want. Why do you? You said because you were. I mean, this is just regular red tape bureaucracy. There's always red tape, and you know we've seen applicants. You know, kids and I like brokerage applications sometimes. You know, one or two times. You know, you need to change this for to do this. But the fact it took eight or nine times. Um, you know. Like, Oh, you, it's so many times. Yeah, it, yeah. It wasn't random. Yeah, it wasn't random. And we were being told to do things we couldn't do, or, you know, we lost paperwork. You know, eventually you can't just say it was an oops we didn't know. There, there's a reason for it. So eventually we just had to find a way to circumvent it, and we did, and here we are. Okay. And then <laughs> rocking and rolling. So you've been, so how long has Law of Realty been in existence? So, since the, you kind of officially, he did do it. Official, all. official. Uh, so we opened up our brokerage location right before COVID. Okay, so we got it. Good a timing. Nice building. Right. We you know, perfect yeah. corner spots when everything happened downtown, the parades and festivals, and then COVID happened. We said, "Oh, we're spending a lot of money on something. We can't even go inside it right now." So we've been brokerage for about three years now, going strong. Okay, in, was it now? Was 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 uh, Delaware shut down when everything it like were you? So you weren't so weren't was uh, I guess was real estate essential. We were thing. considered essential, um, but we were extremely limited by what we could do. Everything had to be virtual tours. We couldn't really talk about doing business. They didn't want us to do that. The state was very much like, hush, hush, stop. Um, but you need to keep producing money for the state. Right. Yeah. Because a lot of our taxes actually come from a transfer tax. So okay. they're like, we still need the money. So like, do it, but just don't talk about it. Right. Um, and then obviously, like everywhere else, listings just plummeted after that um, for the first few months. So Okay. Because you guys, you guys made a way. We did. 100%. Right. We support each other. We're a team at the end of the day. So like, we, we, were, we, we just came together. Um, this stuff played stupid games on Zoom, would play on like Call of Duty together, get on like FaceTime every morning, just be like, Hey, checking in, how's life? You good? I'm good, everybody good? Okay, cool. Have a good day. Pretty I mean, it, it, those were those were difficult times. They were to try to keep and, and to be able to go to start right at that time mm -hmm. with two and now to be at twenty five three years later, that's amazing growth. It is it is a lot of growth, uh, a lot of challenges. Um uh, it's been fun. It's been exciting. When you think you're prepared for what's going to happen, something new happens that you're like, oh, I got to figure out this and fix this. But it's been an adventure and a journey, and I wouldn't trade it, and I wouldn't trade it for the people around me. I absolutely love the people I work with. I do, and cheesy, consider them like family. Um, whether, you know, I've been sick, they brought me food. I brought them food. I've helped watch their kids, and, and you know, we go to parties together. We have fun together. I've seen them break down. I've seen them having the high of the highs or the low of the lows. So we really have a good mentality. And we hold on to that or vibe, if you want to say. We hold on to that so tightly. Like, we don't let anybody break that. So. Yeah, and I think that's, and that's, I mean, that's life, right? I yeah. mean, you're, you know, everyone thinks, like, what's the, um, they they see the they see the results. And they're yeah. awesome. I mean, you're, I mean, you're successful. It just, you know, your personality, it just comes easy for you, right? You've always been successful, you know, uh, but they don't see uh, sometimes the, the behind the scenes. Correct. What what was uh, what was a time when, you know, again, either personal or business, if you mm -hmm. choose to share, mm -hmm. where, um, where maybe things were so you weren't su the success that you are now. Yeah. Where, where, where maybe you might have either been on the brink of quitting or, mm -hmm. or, or had a breakdown in some, like you said, the highs of the highs, the lows of the lows. Mm -hmm. What, what could you share of a time and, and, and when it was a low or of a low and what you did to actually overcome it? Um, that's a good question. You know, I, I, I could give a specific event, but I think what may be better, um, especially for context, is that those lows and lows, you know, some people say, you know, I had this one moment, right? Lowest in my life and it was rock bottom and I went up from there. Fantastic, right? I also believe that for most people in their life, it's going to do this. You got to go up and then you hit back down, right? And it's a continuing journey of getting at those lows and pushing through. Like there's been times where I've had to, you know, ask my parents to spot me some money because I was in between closings and didn't have the funds um, to growing the business itself and, you know, doing this for five years, I have not touched a penny into that business, right? And, and just having to continually push yourself day in and day out, but also understanding that while I may push myself to do stuff that's uncomfortable, like I'm not big on cold car, don't like it. It makes me feel weird. Um, sometimes I've had to push myself, but also recognizing that if I do this for the next two days, that means that the other day I have to take off for myself because my mind's not going to be in a good place. I'm not going to get work done. I'm going to 
create real estate at the end of the day and trying to get people and want to serve people. So it's really understanding that balance of figuring out the problem, figuring out what you can do to fix that problem or resolve it or get support for it, and then understanding how all that affects you personally. Um, Because like with me, with ADHD, I can be all over the place and I can go, go, go. But again, I had to be respectful of my own energy, my own mentality, because while I am go, 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 that eventually does give there's rain. A side effect. Yeah, there's, there's a side a, effect. There's a repercussion. Yeah. Depending on how it, it does, because every action has an opposite and equal reaction, and it's the same way. So you got to find that balance. Um, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs think they see all the good stuff. Like we post about all the positive stuff we do, but there's again all that stuff in the background that happens too. Like I'm having to deal with stuff right now with the FISBO we with one of my clients, and I'm just like, what? what? Just causes stress for no reason. That's a negative, but you know, I'm not posting about that today. But understand that that's why I am all about you have those highs and lows, and it's about riding that wave and it's trying to find out how to have that good balance on it. So when you do hit the low, you're good, but you hit that neck and neck. Like a bull. Like, yeah, like a bull. Boy, I, think I love that. Low. Yeah. I did put myself a couple of times, but I knew that die. Yeah, I'm going to lie. Just, yeah. Definitely get oh, I do. Thought. Every single time. Yeah. yeah. I get hit, but it's, all right. it's a fun time. <laughs> so what is, so then what made you decide you wanted to get into um, business coaching? I mean, I know that, mm-hmm. you know, being an entrepreneur, growing the team, you're coaching anyway, you're changing lives and all that good stuff. But mm-hmm. what made you want to? start coaching outside of your organization to small businesses all over the country. I enjoy giving back a lot, um, almost to a fault. Um, it, it's been ingrained in, in me since I was a kid. My parents have always been about that uh, through the youth programs that I did as a kid as well, like 4-H and Boy Scouts, um, youth and government, YMCA stuff. It, I've always enjoyed that part of life because I know it's not all about me at the end of the day. So if I can make your life better and happier, I know I'm going to be happy too at the end of the day because I get to see that through you. But I can say there is a pivotal moment and it happened probably about a year ago, a year and a half ago. Um, I'd been in public safety for about a decade as well. A firefighter, yeah, EMT, so police yeah, officer. Serving the community. Serving the community. But being a decade in, while I enjoy going on calls, I, I enjoy the adrenaline pump and stuff still, I, I would not deny that. I sat back because of the opportunity to teach a small course and I loved that. I loved being able to educate, especially some of these newer uh, people within uh, public safety, you know, things I know. I can give you some of my expertise. Hey, nobody taught me this, so I'm going to teach you this. And in this situation, you have ABC options, and this will help you be so much easier. Because I know being a rookie, uh, you know, being like, oh my gosh, what do I need to do? You get tunnel vision, you get stressed. And if I had some of that support, I would have done better. I'd have felt better. And so if I can do that now because I have this knowledge, I love just being able to pour that into people. So instead of public safety, obviously, this is business coaching. It's the same way. While I've had really good support around me, there are things I have learned, you know, along my journey. The hard way. The hard way sometimes, right? And I can take that knowledge, and if you're my client, I can give that to you. And even if it's only, you know, 20 clients that I'm helping, that's fine. There's 20 lives I'm investing. Yeah, I'm making their life better and happier and stronger. So for me, that just, to me, that allows me to make the impact that I want to make in my community, both locally and nationally. Yeah, and your and your and the and your. It's not just the twenty people that you're helping. Yeah, yeah. It's the each of those twenty people mm-hmm. are potentially affecting hundreds of lives. I mean, it's their families, yeah. it's their staff, it's their clients, mm-hmm. it's their staff's families. Mm-hmm. Like so, it's a it, huge it's ripple a, effect. Yeah, yeah you, you threw a bunch of boulders in there, but those boulders hit other rocks and waves and everything that gets even bigger so yeah i love that that makes them that makes a lot of sense yeah all right cool so so what do you what do you like to do uh i mean you know you're busy i was yeah i know if you're like me with the adhd <laughs> you you like to do lots of different things yes so you're a musician I, are you still are you still playing are you performing like what is it i like? don't perform anymore i haven't done that in a while i miss it i want to again um so i play guitar bass piano harmonica uh, I can play sax, though I haven't done that in a long time. Uh, cajon, which is fun. Um, and I'm trying to sing again. Uh, but no, I don't perform. I play guitar still quite a bit, and I'm buy, trying to buy a piano. I'd love to buy a used one because they're cheaper. Uh, the new ones are like five or ten grand. But I want to start playing piano even more because for me, playing music is very relaxing. Um, and it's something for me. I will not deny it while I enjoy performing and having everybody you know, have a good time when I play music. It is 100% selfish. This is about me in the moment with the music, just feeling it and vibing with it. Um, so for me, especially on a work day, 
there, there's times like in, in the middle of the day, I just I'll grab the guitar, just start playing around, or I, I will get on the keyboard and start playing a little bit, just to whatever. You have instruments at the office? So not at the office. I work partly from home, so I have them at my house, and so sometimes I will throw them in the car. But I do want to put a piano in the office. It's just trying to find the right place and also be like, yo, I can't probably put a piano. I need to get a keyboard. I'm like, I want a nice keyboard. That's 2500 bucks. Right. I want to take care of that next month. Right. That keeps going the next month. And I'm like, I'll take care of it again at some point. Uh, but stuff like that. Uh, we play video games sometimes in the office too, uh, which is fun. Like Call of Duty, just dumb stuff like that. But besides music, I'm in the gym a lot. Um, every single day. I love lifting weight. It's a way for me to be competitive with myself. And I'm looking to get back into competitive swimming. Uh, okay. Because it's something I can train with myself instead of like needing 10, 12, 15 yeah. people. But I can push myself to get where I want to. And it's also kind of kicks into that competitive edge, similar to real estate a little bit. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, look, I want this. I'm going to beat everybody else. This is the time I need. And if I get to the meet, I'm going to make that happen. That's all I'm in. I'm zoning in this for the next, you know, few minutes. Nothing else. This. Right. So you were you were a swimmer in high school. Did you oh, went in college too? I did not. Um, I swam in high school and then I did U.S. Master swimming for a little bit. Okay. And then you know the chaoticness of life. Life. Yeah. Like ah, oh, that had to go. That had to go. And so I. But you're a firefighter. So yeah, firefighter. Yeah. So you just ten little things. Tend to stay. You know. Yeah. Things come up. Things come up. Yeah. Tell me what. It's called that all was right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, where you at? Right. Yeah. Okay. I guess. <laughs> cool. So I, I so I, I actually didn't even realize that they do, but I guess like any other sport have a master's level for mm -hmm. you to go back and compete in meets and stuff. Yeah, I'd love that so much because I'm still hyper competitive and there is like that itch I still don't get right now, even like just lifting weights because I see my progress, but I'm like, I'm not competing with anybody. Like I need to like, get on that finish line and be like, I won. Yeah. That's my thing. Yeah, but, and I miss that. People and, and people that, that aren't, um, you know, either into sports or particularly into individual sports. Yes. Like swimming, don't, um, I think, may not understand Mm -hmm. or appreciate the the like because they'll say well why do you what, what do you get when you do this yeah. like do you win money yeah no nah. just get a little medal or yeah a little maybe bit. a little trophy yeah maybe, maybe if you're lucky you know five dollar there that's yeah like it's, yeah. You know, it's for me it's, it's for because me. I, I did, did this it. yeah exactly i did this i made this happen i put in the sacrifice for it and i've seen my growth through it because especially like when you win and it's a race you're not sure if you you know you were supposed to win like you going into it thinking you 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 might lose actually, but you get it. You're like, yeah, that's right. I, I made, I made, I made I did not did it right now. Yeah. Don't play with me. Right. I'm gonna beat you next time too. Right. But right. I'm gonna be faster. Right. Yeah. It's about more. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, that that much. Yeah. And guess what? You can go down that much more. It's fine. I know what I can do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's good stuff. <laughs> so where where do you see your where do you see your team? Where do you see the business going? Now, 25 right now. Maybe yep. 302 transactions mm -hmm. coming up. That's the plan. Where do you see yourself like three to five years from now? Good question. Um, and that's something I've been having a, a conversation wise internally. Um, I, I do it all the time, but you know, in three to five years from now, we are a multi state brokerage. Um, we're not just in Delaware, we're Dale, Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, potentially farther, uh, supporting all those agents, giving the same level of support, the same level of culture that we have in our brokerage but in these different states. And I recognize how hard that's going to be, but I think that's what makes us different, and I'll cheesy thing again, than anybody else, is we are so much about ensuring we give that support and that culture. Because again, we've been doing this for you know five, six years now. And yes, while that is rapid growth from where we started to here we are, I'll be honest, we could be, you know, have 100 agents on us. That would not be a problem. The thing is, we don't want 100 agents. We want people that have the same mentality, who give the same level of service, who have the same culture with us. And finding that takes time. It takes learning the hard way, how to hire right, how to fire right, what we're doing as leaders, how we're failing as leaders, how we need to grow. And so with that in mind, in the next three to five years, I think we will, and I know we will, have the ability to do that in multiple states. It's just... What I like to tell clients all the time that I'm also well, but they're like, it's a patience game. Yeah. <laughs> and I just, I'm, right. I'm like, we need to do this today. And I'm like, ah, oh, we can't. That's right. possible. Dang it. Well, well, can we do it like at 1201? Right. Yeah, exactly. Like, it'll, it'll be, be the minute. minute. I think, like, yes, yeah, I like that. Right. Just push it a little bit. Yeah. My smart ass would say yeah. that. I would. Yeah. One thing, I mean, you guys have that, um, 
you know, to be in real estate, to have started the team at the age, mm -hmm. you're, you're the demographic, the makeup of your team is a younger, is a, is a millennial demographic, which is mm -hmm. not, yeah. which is not, um, you don't see that as much no. to, 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 to have a team that size, mm -hmm. that successful and everyone, you know, average or large group yeah. of you guys. Under 30. Under, yeah. Under 30 years. Yeah. Um, and starting, I guess, how were you when you first started? So you were like 20, were you? 24. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was in high school. Yeah. Don't tell anybody. Uh, I was 24, I think. 24, 25. Yeah, 24. 24 sounds right. Some of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. It is. It's pretty impressive to, and and now I guess it, that, so that's why I kind of maybe, the, I'd say the, the old, you were maybe getting some resistance from the old guard. A hundred. Because you were coming in and you guys really are, were taking market share. We were taking market share. So that's a part of it. And we're not, you know, bashful about it. You know, it, we've always posted on social media, and even when it wasn't. Like, Cool to do the thing, and we would do it because why not? You know, it's it's free. I love free, um, and everybody's there, so it's free, and I get to connect with everybody. So why not? But you know, again, some of the old guard didn't like that, and even honestly, up to the, even today, some of them still don't. And they, they they some people still take chops at us, take swings at us, which is fine. Big difference is we're now five years down the road. We are brokerage. We show our worth. The state knows our worth and the value we give to it. So you're not just trying to take a ding at us. You're taking a ding at everybody else we've helped and everybody that supports us. And so, good luck. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. so you guys took even even that challenge is a lesson in <laughs> perseverance, having been denied eight or nine times. Oh, again and again. Yeah. Did, did you ever think in that process that you know what? Maybe maybe it's just not for us. Maybe we'll just stay realtors. I mean, what? Yeah. Do you, mm -hmm. What made? What was it that that had you and Zach say, you know, let's keep can go on when when i mean because again i mean for for someone out there that's in having a struggle in their business mm -hmm. you know having the ebb and flow but maybe it's mostly an ebb <laughs> it's not a flow <laughs> and like damn it can i get some flow yeah, like yeah, yeah. you know and and they're thinking about quitting like what did you what what did you muster up to to actually persevere through what did you think about was it the family was it mm -hmm. your the what you wanted to do the maybe the money but what you wanted to do with the money like what was it that actually um that actually put helped push you through so emotionally you know the frustration was there there was a lot of frustration on our end so a internalizing that and not just making a rash decision but utilizing that you know almost as fuel and not just negative feel, but positive feel, right? Oh, you you smacked me down. Oh, I'm gonna come back. Oh, you did it again. Oh, I'm gonna come back again. Good luck. Try this again. And they did. It it is overwhelming and exhausting. And so what we did, and this is something we've done in the business multiple times, is when you are faced with adversity, right? And you're trying the same thing again and again, and you, and you just can't get through that rock. That rock sucks. Without wall sucks. Yet you, you know, I, right now if I try to run through a wall, I ain't gonna make it through. You know, I have the hawk. So I'm gonna put a ladder up. And so that's what we did. We we're like, look, what are we not thinking about? Brokerage. Well, we didn't want that. No, but it's only an option. Screw it. So we did it. And that allowed us to do it. Again, being able to pivot, and Tom's talked about that a lot, um, especially during COVID, is making that pivot. And we just said, you know what, we tried this eight times and it's not happening. Pivot. And there we are. Oh, cool. And then you went from that ebb to that flow. Right. And it's a different flow. It's not a flow you were prepared for, but here you are. You're still here. You're still on the board. You're still making it happen. And that's what matters at the end of the day is you just have to keep pushing it forward. Sometimes you got to dip. Sometimes you got to dab. But you'll get there and then you see the entrance and you don't touch that one. There's no way. <laughs> yeah. I bet. And also, too, I mean, knowing your spirit, you don't like to lose. I don't yeah. like to lose. No. So that, so that, by that in of itself, you could have done like 10 more times. Oh, 100%. Yeah. You want to do it again? Yeah. No. Yeah. no, I may have by that point been like, yo, I'm done. I'm exhausted. Like, I, you know, clap somebody else saying, I can't do this. But again, being smart enough, you know, hey, you, you got to ebb, you got to flow, do all that stuff. You can't just keep taking it to the face sometimes. Sometimes you got to take that L and again, turn that L into a W and then you got it. So good stuff, man. Let's see. I got a quote. Let's see. We got a quote of the day. We got a quote. I love this. Let's see here. Just so long as it's not like from an ex or my mom. Right. Then we're good. I know. <laughs> right. Austin, he you, did, you didn't play your role, right? So I still don't know. I still don't know. I need a laundry. All right. <laughs> All right. People say they get into real estate for freedom. Yes. But if you have a lot of freedom, you're probably not selling houses. Correct. Aiden Gally, HM Properties. That's I a good one. That's that. what I agree with that wholeheartedly. There is freedom. There is also, again, 
every action has an opposite equal reaction. Yeah, that's right. I get to be in Philly today, and I was in New York City yesterday. That's awesome. That's not every day, though, and you have to time block because if it's not in your calendar, it doesn't get done. You see? My man knows what that's about. He knows what this is about. So it, you got to time block. Yes, you have the fun times, but damn, you got to do the work, too, at the end of the day because you ain't going to make the money if you ain't putting in the work, a little bit of elbow grease. So I completely agree with that one. Yep. Now, now are you still with the fire department? I am now. Uh, and I walk hard time basically. Hyper part time. Um, okay. I was working very much full time when I started, um, like eighty hour weeks. So exhausting, tiring. Yeah. Um, I learned, you know, working twenty four hours and then going to do showings or working all night and then doing showings in the morning is not the look. Yeah. Even though, like, I can go on three hours of sleep, two hours of sleep. It gets it's not your. It's not ideal. That's not ideal. I'm not at hundred percent in any way, shape, or yeah. form. Not even close. So I've kind of taken that back a little bit. Um, but you're still serving. I'm so sorry. And thank you for your service. Too. Appreciate that for me. Yes. Yeah. That's a big deal. I try. It's, it's fun. Um, and you get to see the best and the worst parts of society, of humans. But I think that's also made it really easy for me to be empathetic because I've had the opportunity to see the highs and the lows and understand that everybody's in a situation at some point in their life. And if I can, in some way, shape, or form, help you, even just sometimes being that your shoulder, cool. I did my part. I made you a little bit better, and I keep on pushing through. So, yeah, and I bet being showing that empathy in someone's home when, um, you know, when there's been an emergency, mm -hmm. and, you know, a, a medical emergency or what yeah. have you, and you've been able to to help in whatever way you could mm -hmm. has, like you said, has, I'm sure has helped you with your agents, helped you with oh, a thousand percent. Yeah, it does because sometimes people just want to be hard, and understanding that you know, getting frustrated in a moment. Is it going to fix anything? Usually speaking, and so you know, being empathetic with my with with my agents, you know, any failure of theirs is a failure on me, because I didn't do something appropriately. I didn't train them in a way. I didn't give them the knowledge or the resource. So how can I be mad at you when I messed up? And then with clients, it's the same thing. You know, you're frustrated in a transaction. Well, that's understandable. I can do this in my sleep, and I do it in my sleep sometimes. They don't. They do this once every five to eight years, and everything changes, you know, in five to eight years on how it's done to an extent. So it makes sense that they're frustrated. So let me help guide them through that and understand if I was in their shoes, I'd probably feel the same. So I agree. That's pretty cool. Thank you. Buy them milk. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want to buy, by all means, man. Hey, we get you a beach house too. Right. We got you. We got it. So if 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 someone is thinking about some vacation property mm -hmm. in Milford or or people in the community of 10,000, yeah. um, you know, want to buy a house, want to sell a house or agents mm -hmm. that are the right fit mm -hmm. for your culture and want to join your team, how do we reach you? Uh, best way is always through social media. So Facebook, you can find my personal account, Austin Garner or Austin Garner with Loft Reality or Loft Reality. Uh, Instagram's austin.garner.loft, TikTok's austin.loft. Or you can always give me a shout. Uh, my number is 302-535-3744. Texting is usually better because I get a bunch of calls every day and a lot of spam, so probably shouldn't text me first before you call. Uh, but yeah, be more than happy to connect with anybody looking to buy, sell, invest, looking to become an agent, have questions about real estate, or you just want to say, hey, you did that podcast thing. That was cool. I'd be like, yo, I appreciate it. <laughs> That's it. So we're, 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 we're fighting fires. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're leading a team. Mm -hmm. We're coaching small business owners across the country. Yeah. We're playing music, we're playing like six six different instruments that I counted. Yeah, yeah, so, and 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 counting. Yeah, yeah. We're swimming competitively. I like to do it all. Yeah, I, I I'm not good at staying still, and I've learned I need to a little bit at least take that break day every week. Um, I just like to be go go go. Life is way too short to not take advantage of everything that's in front of you, because I I would hate to look back and be like I should have done this thing. I want to do this thing, and I didn't do this thing. I much rather said I did and I tried and I succeeded or I failed. Right. But unless it's on the table. At least I did it. It was on the table. It's here's my experience, here's my life. And hopefully along that way I can make an impact and help as many people as I can. Gosh, it's cliche I'm that guy now. But it's fine. I love it. It's happy that that's what matters. No, it's like I don't know if they have the same like with swimming, like, you know, leave it in the pool like in wrestling. It's yeah. leave it on the mat. Yeah. Like you can't lose the mat and then you're coming off on your horse playing and laughing and joking on the side. Like that means you got energy over here. Yeah, yeah. Where was your yeah. energy? You should have had over there. there. Yeah. Did you have back in the yeah. game? Leave it, leave it. Leave Dedicated it. that time in that moment. Yeah. So. yeah. Like in this moment right now, it's us doing this. Nothing yeah. else. You're all in. I love it. I'm here for it, brother. All right, man. Appreciate it. Thank I you. Love it. Man. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Yes, sir. Yeah.